All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about parametric studies in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. So these are optimization tools, assuming you already have a flow simulation project set up. Uh, and there's going to be three modes that they can operate in. That's what if analysis, goal optimization, and design of experiments. We'll quickly go over all three. And the example we'll be looking at is this uh, liquid cooler for a CPU here, as you see pictured on the right. So first, let's review the existing problem setup here. Uh, I have flow simulation add in loaded. I have a project already created where we have a relatively low flow rate of 30 liters an hour of water coming in. And this is at 50 degrees Celsius and then exiting at some unknown temperature. And we have a 225 watt heat source applied through kind of the imprint area here on the bottom of the cooler. And what we'll get as a result is our temperature distributions on this uh, CPU cooling water block. We'll be looking at the average and maximum temperature on this chip surface. And we'll also be tracking the pressure drop of the fluid. Now, that's all fine for a single data point. And as we know, we can right click and clone our projects to create a duplicate of it. But if we want to try a lot of variations and try to learn about trends in our designs, then we might want to choose a new parametric study. And this is where we'll see access to those three types of studies. And to start off with, we'll quickly discuss the what if analysis, which is basically batches of, of variations we can perform on one or multiple variables and run a whole bunch of different scenarios and plot trends after the fact. So the advantages of this method, it's very straightforward, uh, easy to set up. It does allow plotting multiple variables, whether those are model dimensions that we're changing or flow simulation parameters like our flow rates and heat sources. The cons, I suppose, would be that it doesn't automatically determine an optimum design point for us. Um, and the other con it would be if you have a whole bunch of variables, yes, we can solve them, but you'll end up with a very large number of scenarios that can get uh, unwieldy eventually. But this is pretty much my go-to choice for most parametric studies. So let's take a look at how to set it up. And here under my input variables, I can choose to add a simulation parameter. Again, that would be like a flow rate or a heat source or a dimension parameter, which would be a model dimension. So let's choose a simulation parameter to start, and I'm just going to choose for this one to vary my flow rate to try to understand what's the ideal amount of flow rate coming in to maybe size a pump for this water cooling block. So we'll input the volume flow rate, and here we need to give it some kind of range or table of values. So I'm going to use a range with a step size and go from 30 to 300 liters an hour with a step size of 60. That's going to generate six scenarios. So when I go to my scenario tab, you'll see here six design points loaded in, which we will batch run shortly. But first, we want to load in any additional output parameters. So these would be, of course, my goals that I had defined. So for things like my delta pressure, and that's delta, delta temperature of the fluid, we'll also take the chip surface temperatures and load those in and any cut plots that I might want to store or any other result plots. So I can choose add results right there. And we'll choose the surface plot I had created, my flow trajectories, and that should be good. Now I can go to my scenario tab and choose to click run to begin running the analysis. And I just want to point out that if you need to stop the analysis early, you'll want to make sure you click this stop button right here from the parametric study. Uh, if you try to cancel the solver monitor for any individual design point, then it's just going to skip that one and continue on. You want to make sure you click this stop to actually stop the analysis. But we're going to use a little editing trickery here and just switch to a version that already has the results completed. So when I go to my scenario tab, you'll see the populated values for all the various design points that were calculated. We can see if we go to the things like cut plots, surface plots, we'll see any of the result plots that we loaded in. So we can kind of see here that they get uh, cooler as we increase that flow rate. But to quantify this a little better, if we go to our goals tab, you can display this in two ways. 
By default, it will be displaying a table like this, but you can also switch to a chart. And here we can see our chip surface average temperature versus our design point. And we can see also things like our delta P versus our design point. Now that's not directly a chart of you know, flow rate versus temperature, so you may want to click the export to Excel button. So once we're in Excel, we can transpose the goal data that we're interested in plotting, and then insert a scatter plot to get the chart displayed exactly how I want with the axes and units correct. The next parametric study type is goal optimization, which only allows a single variable and a single target. So the pros of this method is, I guess it determines the optimum design point automatically, but the cons are numerous. Um, we don't really know in advance how many scenarios we need to reach that optimal target. It doesn't have as great functionality for plotting design trends. Again, it's only limited to a single variable, and if you change a target, you have to rerun the whole parametric study. So it's really not a study type that I use or recommend using very often anymore. But if you do have just a simple single target optimization, it can be useful. This one will just show some pre-calculated results. So this was the same exact type of study, except we varied the flow rate from 30 to 300 as a continuous range, which is what we use in a goal optimization. And we set a criteria to say, hey, let's try to hit that 60 degree average chip surface temperature and then it will basically take as many iterations as it needs it usually tries the maximum and the minimum of your variable and then starts to iterate to try to converge onto that chip surface temperature that we specified or whatever target we specified and i gave it a tolerance of a half a degree so eventually figured out all right well 125 flow rate should give us a right around 60 degree surface temperature um, so we just put a limit on the maximum number of calculations we want to try, but we don't really know how many it will take or if it will ever get there. The third type we'll look at is design of experiments, or DOE. And this comes from a branch of statistics that deals with complex multivariable analysis. So the design of experiments study is going to allow us to do multivariable and multi-target optimization. It aids us in extracting the optimal design point, which we can do after the fact. So if we do change kind of our optimization target, we don't need to rerun the whole parametric study. If we have many variables, we may end up needing less scenarios than if we did the what if analysis. And it'll allow us to plot our design trends as these 3D response surfaces, which can be useful for understanding what's going on. I guess the cons here would be, it's a little bit more complex to set up and the number and distribution of the experiments we choose, which are the equivalents of scenarios here, can affect the results quality. But these will really allow you to understand a lot more about your design and the design space if you especially are planning to experiment with multiple variables. So let's take a look at setting up a design of experiments study here. We'll create a new parametric study and choose design of experiments. And I'm going to combine a simulation parameter such as my volume flow rate once again here. And we'll use that same range of say 30 to 300. And let's also combine a model dimension, so a dimension parameter. So if I go to my SOLIDWORKS feature tree, I should have some dimensions here that are pretty easy to access. Uh, one of them could be the number of channels that are cut into this. So if we double click on the linear pattern, you can see that number 21 hiding out there. If we click on that, that's our channel count. Let's vary that from 21 to 34. Now we could continue adding additional parameters such as the height of the cooler, the width of the channels, anything really that we can think of. As before, we'll load in the output parameters that we're interested in. And any relevant cut plots or surface plots. 
Now, one of the key differences is on the scenario tab, notice we don't have our scenarios pre-generated for us. We need to generate experiments ourselves, and we can define how many experiments we want. So when I click Create, we'll see a number of experiments created here. And if I don't like the way these are distributed, I can delete them, change the number of experiments, and recreate. So this is what I mean by the number and distribution of the experiments being able to affect the results. The more variables you have, the more experience experiments you'll need to be able to adequately capture them. Then when we're ready, we can go ahead and run this whole batch of analyses. And once again, we're just going to use some movie magic and switch over to the completed one. So we can see here all the individual experiment points that were generated in their corresponding values. Now, if we click this little button that says response surfaces, then we'll be able to visualize basically trend behavior in three dimensions. So we can see plots of our goals, like our delta T of our fluid. Let's look at our chip surface max temperature actually down here. So we can see a goal where one axis is the number of channels, one axis is the volume flow rate, and then the height of our surface is the chip temperature, surface temperature. So the largest contributor to this is clearly the volume flow rate. As that increases, the chip temperature drops quickly. But if we look at it from the other direction, we can also see that increasing the number of channels has a kind of uh, helpful effect when we're in this maybe middle region of flow rate. Um, at low flow rates, it looks like it actually hurts us to have additional channels. So these are the sorts of things we can learn by looking at response plots and we'll see you know completely different trends when we look at our pressure goal and what we see here is going to be for our objective function which we have not created yet so back to the parametric study the process of defining an optimum design point now again is done after the fact so we do this by clicking the find optimum button and building what's known as an objective function so essentially we want to set weights only on the goals that we want to optimize so let's say we don't care about pressure or the fluid temperature we'll set those to zero and now if i were to just click add design point that would give me um, purely whatever is best for the lowest temperatures here but most likely you may also want to add a constraint so you can click right here add a constraint and then also set some value for say the pressure so we could set some value and set our delta P to have weight and make sure that in this case, my, my pressures are reading as negative. So I actually want it to be greater than let's say negative 3000. So that'll just keep me away from the highest of the uh, pressures here. So when I set that all up, if I click add optimum design point, you'll see an additional design point that's created and this is based on its estimates at the best uh, combination of settings. It's going to yield 3,000 pascals of delta P with the minimum chip surface temperatures possible. So to confirm this, we can run this uh, design point or even at any point, any scenario or experiment you have, you can create a project out of it. And this will actually update the geometry and create a new flow simulation project just with this particular configuration. So then you can also use this to do your own um, additional results processing and so on. As a note when dealing with geometry variations, I would always recommend manually testing the min and max range of your model to make sure that it rebuilds in SOLIDWORKS correctly and you're not getting faces that are destroyed or partially clipped or anything like that. And if you happen to be working in an assembly, just be careful because you may make geometry changes inadvertently to subassemblies or different parts that you weren't expecting if you start changing dimension parameters. Okay, so once again, to quickly recap, consider using the parametric studies in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Anytime you have batches of parameters you want to adjust or explore, the what if analysis is really the recommended entry point here. It's quite easy to define a parameter, whether it's a model dimension or some simulation parameter that you want to vary 
and just plot trends over time and you can manually pick out an optimal design point yourself if that's what you're after. Or if you have a more complex problem with many variables, then you might want to consider the design of experiments study, which by the way has further details in the help files that talk about the theory that's used as well as how to choose a proper number of experiments. So we'll link those help files in the video description below. Hopefully this video was helpful and let us know in the comments below what type of content you'd like to see next.